Yeah. All right, ladies, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. All right, so we're back on the back of the field. Good afternoon, sir. So today we are going to look at Free Village in Jamaica, not Jamaica, but in the Caribbean. But more so, we're going to use a lot of examples from Jamaica, right? Uh, so, so today we're looking at three villages. And then on Thursday, we're going to look at peasantry. But the three villages and peasantry tend to intertwine with each other. All right? And so... Sure. Go ahead for me. It, I was saying I realized that from when I was reading yesterday, because most things I would peasantry came up in free villages. Yes. So that why would, continue asking. Sir, why would nobody just do it in one class? Well, if, free villages and peasantry? Yes, sir. Let us see if we can do it in one class. <laughs> I agree with you, but uh, one year I've taught free villages and peasantry together as one, and the head of department who no is no longer at St. Andrew, uh, she said to me that I should teach them separately, and so since then I tried to teach them separately, so that's the reason why I'm teaching it separately. But I'm happy that you're reading. Miller is here? Yes, sir. All right. It's good to know that you are here. Good, good. All right. And Bartley is still here? Or oh, she's yes, at school? Sir. sir, I'm here. All right, good. Let's just put it out there. Sir, I missed you yesterday. <laughs> this is a good challenge. That's what she's so I didn't hear your voice in the class yesterday to contribute to the discussion, Barclay. Hence, sir, missed you. Exactly, because you wouldn't miss somebody. You wouldn't notice that her voice was missing if you never miss her. I might also not be at class. Yeah, you know them siblings there were ever fighting and I say, yeah, that's the two of them. All right, good, good. And Daniel Ashley is not here, and I'm not seeing Giselle. Giselle is at school. All right, it seems so. All right, ladies. So let us now look. So there are three. Uh, so if we look at, I'm going to look at the definitions of uh, peasant groups, peasantry, and free villages. And uh, so we're looking at those two definitions, right? So. When we talk about peasant groups, uh, somebody read that for me, please. A band of ex-slaves who cooperated in various ways to achieve independence from the plantations by creating small farms outside of the plantations to raise animals and grow crops for subsistence and small-scale commerce, which is taken from the Cape Caribbean Studies textbook. All right, good, excellent. So. so Go ahead. This next that definition is oh, I you know that. Because this that's what she did for SBA. Big up yourself, Karen. <laughs> Sir, this was an SBA topic. Um, yeah, yeah. how did yes. the peasantry contribute to economic development between 80 and something to 1878? Yeah, that's what she did. That's what she did. She could she should be teaching the class. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves today. All right. So we know for sure that peasants, uh, peasants were actually ex-enslaved people or the former enslaved or the free people who they left the plantation and they would have established small farms. Now, peasantry is a mode of production, right? So peasants is the name of the people who are involved in the mode of production, which is peasantry. So you're going to have a small farm where you're growing food for yourself, but the excess food you're going to use to sell. 
No, peasants is not only about small farming because the rare animals, the pe some of the peasants rare animals and some were also involved in fishing. Some were also involved in craft. So we have peasants, peasantry. Now, what were free villages? Somebody read free villages for me, please. Settlements established by the ex slaves. Free villages were townships established in Jamaica in the wake of full freedom from slavery and apprenticeship in 1838. Good. So yeah, free, free, thank you very much, Miller. So, free villages, these were settlements or what we call communities that were established established after slavery ended where the freed people are going to live within those settlements. They are going to establish those communities. And so, as I said before, that free villages and peasantry, they are linked together because it's when people establish free villages that they are going to have the land to plan to establish their small farms so they can involve in a mode of production or commerce. You understand what I'm saying, ladies? Yes, sir. Good, good. Now, what were the factors? Uh, before that, I want to show you some privileges in Jamaica that were established. Uh, in Jamaica, we had in St. Catherine, somebody read the privileges in St. Catherine for me. What's that? Sturge Town, Kidson yes. Town, Sligoville, and Clarkson Town. All right, good, St. Anne. Sturge Town, Boxton, Philadelphia, Clarksonville, and Harmony. Good, Trelawney. Catherine Granville, Albert Own, Time and Patience. What? Wilberforce. Wilberforce, good. St. James. Ethel Town, Goodwill, Maldon. And in Hanover, that's where my family originated. Oh, Reb and Sandy Bay. Very good. Go ahead for me, Barkley. Thank you very much. Sir, you know what, crazy, sir? My family comes from Sandy Bay in an old, literally. Mm -hmm. It's where I grew up, sir. Wow, so you grew up in a, one of the free villages. Oh, my God. You're nice, you never, know, you never know that Sandy Bay was a free village. No, sir, not at the time. I never knew. So, when you, so this is the first time you are discovering that? Yes, sir. I, it, it never dawned on me. I just thought it was just, you know, country, but it really never dawned on me because now that I think about it, it's so small and everybody know everybody. Good. So, and then one thing is that if you're going to the exam, you have an edge because sometimes they ask in the exam to name two or three villages. You're right, Sandy Bay in Anova. Of course. And mm -hmm. Kitty Town, Sligoville, nobody can forget those. Sligoville. And Kitty Town and Sligoville, because Kisson Town, I know Kisson Town and I know Sligoville. Sligoville is it's the first free village, sir. It is the first free village in Jamaica. Right? And so, if we look at Kissing Town. I think I have friends that live there in Kissing Town and also Sligoville, not far away from me. Oh, I, sir, here, so them like sell the whole heap of fruits, like when you're going near Flatbridge or it's past Flatbridge. No, it is the side closer to. So, all right. It is not on the side of Flatbridge. It is, anybody know a place in Spanish town called Greendale? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Like, I how Greendale is like where the stoplight is and then they have this church on a hill, kind of? Yes. So you drive right there. You pass the church on a hill. Oh. Sir, I really you... thought it was near Flat Ridge. Never mind. No, it is up that side. So you drive Greendale area. You go to... You pass the church on a hill. Continue on Kis uh, not Kisatown. Uh, pass St. John's Heights. Past San Diego Hills, and then you go straight up into the mountains, and that's where it's like oh, up here. So, sir, what mm -hmm. happened to St. Mary Port and St. Thomas Clarendon? What happened to the other parishes? Why they never established none of those parishes? I'm not so sure why the churches are the yet, yeah, maybe, uh, especially Kingston, because I thought that Augustown was a free village. It could be, maybe they just put some of it on the map. Are the major ones. It could be. All right, ladies. Where yes, we sir. No, let us look now at, because I was told that August stone in for that place name again. You know, Augustine in Kingston, where them always are. Uh, yeah, they're shoot out and the people. Yeah. I think they said Augustine was a free village. So I'm pretty sure I can't concur. I learned that in primary school. You learned that <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, it's primary school. I believe I am primary school. <laughs> I learned it in primary school. Mm -hmm. And then in St. Catherine, there's another place in St. Catherine by the name of Augustown also. That is yes, also... Sir. We were clearly very Catholic. unoriginal with our names. Yes, they say it is a free village. All right, so ladies, what factors led to the development of peasantry and free villages in, in the Caribbean? All right, or the West Indies. So one... Is that some islands, like our territories, I should say here, because British Guyana is not an island. So British Guyana, Dominican, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago, those territories had a lot of lands. Therefore, during the time of slavery, the, ends, the, the planters did not utilize all the lands in these territories because these territories are the size of these territories are pretty big. All right. So the availability of lands in these territories led to the development of free villages. Uh, if we look outside now, uh, usually when I'm teaching and I'm teaching, I ask the students to look on the hills in Jamaica. You see a lot of empty land, idle land all over the place. Where even you, if you want to go and set up a free village, you can just go and capture a park and set up a free village. The rich are doing it and building apartment complexes. So why the poor can't do it? But anyway, we're not getting there today. So we have the availability of yeah. lands in these territories. Ooh, somebody has something to say? See, I was going to say that's why police don't ramp sometimes but tell them to take down the building them, sir. You know, like... Oh, it's like where stadium is, sir. Yeah. One time they did build up a building out there, so sir, a high rise building, and then tell them to take down everything, sir, because it was first of all they built it wrong, and maybe it was capture land too. Who knows? Yeah, could be. But sir, like when, when I go to country, like there's this hill area, and like. When I was going there early, early this year, there was like this new building, like they were building like a complex or something. And like they started to build up a wall only for, um, I think it was some Chinese people's like development or whatever. And the police and the agencies had to come and tell them to stop building it and take down everything because they're not allowed to do it. And they just started building without any proper regulations or anything. Yes, that also happens. But we know for sure, we drive around Jamaica, we see that lands are available, right? So the availability of lands led to free villages uh, being developed in these territories. Now, Barbados, St. Kitts, and Antigua, they had free villages 
but they had few, few privileges. Now, another reason that led to the development of privileges was uh, the cost of land. And so in territories like Jamaica and Grenada, Jamaica and Grenada had, in the Caribbean, had the cheapest lands because land in Jamaica was three pounds per acre and in Grenada it was 10 pounds per acre. But in Barbados, the price of land after slavery ended was 60 pounds to 300 pounds per acre. In fact, they increased the cost of land. Why do you believe that they increased the cost of land? I'm coming to you, Austin. Why you believe, I'm asking you answer the question and then make a point. Why you believe they increased the cost of land? To get more money to pay. You believe them increase the cost of land to get more money? Sir, to pay off them debts. Sir, so that people wouldn't be able to afford it too. Didn't you add, who, say, who said the affordability? Zeta. Yes, Miller, that is the reason who they don't want to afford the land. They're the black the people. They're the ex-slaves. The ex-enslaved. Why they don't want them to afford the land? What they want to force them to do? Stay to on the, the land so they can use them. Repeat from me, Miller. Sir, so they could like, cause if they don't have anywhere to go, they would be forced to stay where they are so they can just continue to use them very good to stay on the plantation. So they increase the cost of land to force them to remain on the plantation. Go, go uh, Austin, Thorpe, and then Barclay. Sir, I um, probably have this point on your PowerPoint, but I read in the list you forget. Also had mm -hmm. a role in the development of free villages. Repeat. Sir, I read in the list you forget that the missionaries had a role. Which yes. Are, you have it on yes, your you are correct. Yes, the missionaries ha had a role. I'm coming back to that point. Okay. So, Sir, I was saying that one of the other reasons why the price of land was so high is because the because if you look, if you compare the size of Barbados to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, Jamaica is a larger island. Therefore, yeah. in selling land, they can sell land for cheaper because there's more land to sell. In Barbados, mm -hmm. where it's so small, the more the, peasant, the peasants are able to afford the land, the more um, the white people that have gotten pushed out, which, which as um, Zayda said, it would force them to go back to work on the plantation. But because yes. there was so little land to sell, they had to make as much that only said they had to make as much profit as possible to pay off their debt, but mm -hmm. they had to find a way to keep it for as long as possible because they couldn't afford it. And because there was such limited space, they knew that there was no other alternative for them to get land because the island took up. That is true. And in fact, in Barbados, most of the land they actually use for, for sugar production. Go ahead for me, Barclay. Sir, paraphrasing what uh, Zeda and Carl said, sir, two things. I think one, sir, again, they wanted them, the more, it was it was a small amount, and so if you up the price, many persons couldn't afford land because one, they weren't paying them enough, obviously, one, and I think two, they felt that if the land were cheap and many black persons or many ex enslaved could own land, it would make them almost equal to the white people in their eyes. And so to prevent that, they drove up the prices. So again, if you can't afford the land, they can't make the money. And if you can't make the money, you, you know, you, you just stay down in poverty. That plot to keep the black people down or the ex slaves down. That is true. That is true. And so it is to keep them down and to, and to control them. That was the reason. Uh, so we, they, so one was the availability of land. I'm coming to your point, Austin and missionaries. The next reason why people that led to the development of privileges and peasantry, as we said, P 
people want to leave the plantation. You have a desire to move away. You have a desire to forget about the ills of the plantation and to be independent. You need to be free from all of the stress and the burdens. Another reason was the demand for new crops. So after slavery ended, sugar was important, but it, there was a lot of demand for other crops, like grown provision, because now the plant is not really responsible for grown provision for the entire uh, estate. People live all over. New freed people settled all over the islands, right? And as a result of that, they need to buy food for themselves and their families. So there was demand for new crop. Another reason that led to the development of free villages and peasantry was the disintegration of the plantation, meaning that because the planters, were, some planters were bankrupt, as we mentioned yesterday, some of them just leave the plantation, they abandon the plantation. If I abandon the plantation, well, we are ex enslaved, Thorpe and I, both of us, right? We leave our plantation and we have nowhere to go. You say abandon plantation, what are you going to do? I'm going to it over. You're going to take it over. Yes, you're going to squat. <laughs> Plant so you, so remember the, 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 the plantation, the plantation, the land is fertile. You have waters, waterway, and they close to the plantation. And you come up on your plantation. First of all, when slavery finished, them not even they, they didn't say to you and said, okay, here is a piece of land. Why people come here keep land? Indian people after indentureship, they got land. Chinese people got land. Everybody received land except black people. We are the only people who come from the East, turn part of the world and come in the Caribbean. We're the only one never get anything when our period of stress ended. White received, Indian received, Chinese received. We as black people, we don't get no land. Why do you think you have so much ghetto communities? Why do you believe that so many, anywhere you see in the world where squatting where people take over land is because of the legacies of slavery. Now, so the plantation, some plantations are abandoned. They are going to close down some because they have financial problem. And this planter by the name of Peter Chapman, he would have sold 102 acres of his plantation to former enslaved people. In addition to that, so one, the availability of land, land the cost of land, uh, it was cheaper in Jamaica and Grenada. So even though in Jamaica and Grenada, they increased the cost, but it was still cheaper. People had a desire to move away from the plantation the demand for new crops, and you give examples of those new crops and why there's a demand for the new crop. The disintegration of the plantation and also legislative restriction. So they are going to put in place rules, right? They are going to put in place rules to restrict enslaved people from owning lands. So one, you're going to put in place squatting act. So you can't go and take over people and the trespass act. You can't go and trespass on anybody's land. So squatting means you can't settle on the land. Trespass means you can't go on people's land. The vagrancy act, meaning that you uh, you can't live on the roadside or in the towns. You can't be vagrant and be idle. Eviction act, if you squat, we can evict you. So immediately as slavery ended, they passed these Sir? rules, these laws. Go ahead for me, Austin. 
there was it true from ex slaves that because they didn't have much money they left they stayed on the plantation sir but they had to pay um rent they and had they to pay rent they were paid the um the the what the name the slave owners or the planters the the planters they evict them and also if they spot on somebody's land sometimes government land or private land they could evict them also but my question to you now is that we know for sure that legislative restriction they had these restrictions the squatting the trespass the vagrancy and the eviction act how this led to the development of free villages how Seriously? because now we know squatting act the Trespass Act, the Vagrancy Act, and the Eviction Act, those acts led to the development of free villages. But how? I'm sorry. There must be a link. Go due ahead, Commissioner. Due to the regulations preventing the, the freed slaves to be able to, to just live where they wanted to live, so they couldn't just say set up a base and black this is what i this is where i want to live they had to find another way to pull to buy land so that they could live there legally so of course you know the slaves they are but i don't want to say but and the the peasants had become they know they were close so a group of peasants would pull together some money to buy some land and they'd all agree that they would live there individuals such as James Filippo and oh my gosh and Lord them names to me but those people um Thomas Burchell they saw that the slaves were in need as they were missionaries and they had a bit of money that they could get from the church and they were generous you know take hmm? you're taking on my point watch the girl I'm sorry <laughs> so these people they were generous enough to be like okay we see that you need help so they purchased the free villages and helped them to establish schools and churches because <laughs> yes i know right <laughs> and moses baker is also another person so thomas Burchell, william uh, thomas uh, something james Filippo, thomas Burchell, and moses baker those are three um baptist missionaries who helped to develop free villages with a william neighbor Jamaica. Yes, sir. I go to one of the churches. Yeah. I used to go to one of the churches. You are so, a Baptist? Yeah. I go to Filippo. Okay. I go to Edgewater. Okay. Anyway, sir, hey, we literally so, learn at church. Like, we learn about this stuff. So. I'm not oh. a Baptist. All yes. I need is one second. Let her run along. So, you're correct. Because they're going, they have laws to evict them. Vagrancy have to lock them up if they are on the road living. Trespass have to lock them up. Squatting act if they live there, they could run them off the land. They are going to find different areas, right? They are going to find ways to acquire land legally so nobody can say that they are squatting. Nobody can say that they are trespassing. Nobody can say that they are vagrant. And nobody can evict you. Another way, ladies, uh, that led to free villages, uh, the development of free villages, was that individuals used to save their money, like Lunan, Henry Lunan. Uh, he would have saved money and established free villages in, in St. Thomas. And then also in British Guyana, the ex-enslaved people are the freed people. They used to pull their money together and they buy plantations and estates like Queenstown in British Guyana. Another example in Antigua was that the governor in Antigua sold lands to the people and that was used to establish free villages. And squatting, while we know that they are squatting, like there are some communities that people still squat. They take over the land, unused and idle lands. 
and that led to the development of three villages also. And in some areas like in Barbados, the planters gave the former enslaved people money and the former enslaved people, instead of them, use the money and do all type of foolishness with it. They keep that money together and they buy plantations. So one example is that they, the former enslaved people would have bought a plantation by the name of Rock Hall Estate. Now, to you now, most of you have been talking about missionaries. So from Austin comes straight down. Everybody, missionaries, yes, for sure. Another factor, and a very important factor that led to the development of, of free villages was the assistance given by missionaries, especially the Baptist church, right? So the Baptist church, what they did was that they borrowed money from their parent society or the church headquarters in, in Europe. And what they did was that they bought the land for the ex-enslaved people, divide the land and sold the land for cheap. So for example, you have search town in Trelawney that was established by William Nib. Uh, you have James Phillips that established. Sir, isn't it James Phillips who? But yeah. Uh, what do you mean? And I believe William Nib bought the land for 10,000 pounds and he divided it up for 200 families. Oh, sir, and Jose Marty too. Jose Marty was also, a, oh, there so was a free village. No, in terms of things, Jose Marty um, acquire means to provide lunch to um, ex slaves. Oh. Um, excuse me, sir. Go ahead for me. Sir, a while ago I was Googling and um, I found out that um, Slagoville used to name Highgate or something like that. It used to name Highgate? Yes, sir. It said the free village of Highgate renamed Slagoville. Oh, I never know that. That's new to me. Sir, we're teaching you. Wonderful. But that is good. And it's James Filippo, if it, met, if it matter. All right. Sir. Thanks. I, I read that the missionaries, sir, they were, um, like, they noticed that all of their congregants were migrating to the mountains. Mm-hmm villages in the mountains and so they were like they want their congregants to be able to attend church all the time and so they borrowed money from the church and they bought the land and then they divided it and then they sold it for a little verses to the families to something yes else. that is a very good good point very good point now ladies i'm going to show you some pictures from three villages in jamaica this is one Clarksonville. uh this is the sign to enter the community um, these are the houses in the, in fact, my grandmother was born in one of these. Yes, they used to have it in countries recently, them lick it down. Same way it look in country from what it is still a days. Uh, so this is the homes. This is how they, the houses used to look. This was the main form of transportation donkey. Yes, you see the children in the free villages. Uh, perfect example. This is where our family is coming from. That's not enough to hype. No, you pass. Yes. What a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you pass. All of us behave like we, we born with gold spoon in our mouth and we come from. Queen Elizabeth family. No, no. This is where we are coming from. Hear that, Daryl? All right. This is a young lady in the river washing. That's where our families used to go. Our ancestors used to go after slavery. And, going, and these pictures, ladies, are actually pictures that were taken in 1890. Sir, cameras did exist? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. So these pictures are 1890. This picture is an 1890 black and white, but somebody actually colored the picture. 
So these are 1890s picture. All right, ladies. So we know for sure that three villages did exist and we know the factors. You're going to the exam, know at least four. Four is good. Four reasons that led to the development of three villages are four reasons that led to the development of no five, four to five. And no example, give examples of the three villages like Sandy Bay. My family is from Anova this side. Kiana, maybe both of us family could be. This oh. is the second time Sir is saying this. Yes. I think multiple times. Yeah, exactly multiple times. All right, ladies, let us look now at these areas. Look at all the free villages set, uh, established. Look at the housing structure. What are some of the challenges you think that they they are going to have in the free villages? Them wet up. No, sir, you can't get wet up because this right here, uh, they put the, the mud over it, not the mud. You can't get wet inside it is better than most of you like, like it's built to withstand that about category four hurricanes like huh? category four hurricanes like category four hurricanes like hit jamaica when when like some of these establishments that existed and they they were okay they were fine they were fine yes but what is some of the issues let i give you some one was health problem. So, so one problem they faced in the free villages was that they had no public health system. Back in Jamaica, it's just one hospital they had, and it was KPH in Kingston. One hospital. And so everybody noticed all of these people from Sandy Bay and Mount Horeb and Bethel Town and Search Town. If you're sick, everybody has to come to Kingston for to the hospital for health health the kingston and saint catherine about anybody once you live saint catherine Canaan, and all over this part problem you have to go to kingston at kps right uh so the first issue that we're looking at uh was that they had health issues no public health system really there are small number of doctors and they had to travel very long distances for to get healthcare. That's why a lot of our parents and our grandparents they were born at home. That's why everybody was a midwife. Yes, every that was one song. Every village had a midwife in it, one or two midwives. Yes, yeah, so your father, we're coming from ladies. That's why we must look. There are no people out here just doing it just because they want to. But then it wasn't even a choice. A choice. It was not a choice. It was a must. Because my grandmother was actually born in this house, a house like this. All her siblings were born there. And when I said to them, Mr. Grandma, but that is really this little house we used to live in. <laughs> Let me say, oh, no sleep. Sir in shock. <laughs> Sir is in shock. Yes, I was in shock. Sir, I'm better than being comfortable. And then comfortable, right? Another issue that they had was a lot of diseases happen. Uh, because if you're in this place at night time, you're going to open the door because inside going to be very hot. Notice there's no window. Night cold. Yeah. Right? So there's no like circulation really. No circulation. So you look at it, you're going to have whooping cough. The floors are dirt floor. I saw that the person who took these didn't go inside these homes and took the pictures. Inside, they were dirt floors. Sir. People in Africa still like live in houses like that, like the house is made out of mud. Yes. Still. And if you no notice the community, there's no drainage. There's no bathroom on the 
and the, 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 the little huts that they live in. No bathroom. So you're going to have a whooping cough. One way to heal the whooping cough was to boil the bush rat tail and drink it. Drink the, the tea from the bush rat. That's how they heal the whooping cough. Poor drainage. Mosquito-borne diseases. So they have a lot of malaria and smallpox. Uh, because of how small they live in, uh, the living condition. Uh, you have a lot of cholera. And so one example of a cholera cemetery in Jamaica is where you have Pantana Pharmacy and Waterloo Road. In Jamaica, in between 1950 and 52, one in every three persons died from cholera. 12% of Grenada's population died from cholera. 20,000 people died from cholera in Barbados. 4,000 died in Trinidad. And then you have dysentery and typhoid. Dysentery is a disease that really comes from like rats. And so health issues were a major problem within the three villages. So ladies, if you're going to the exam and they ask you to talk about the problems that the three villages face, you said one problem is health. You talk about that they had the, the, the hospital, one hospital in Jamaica and this, that, 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 that. Then you talk about the different diseases and how it affected the people. Ladies, I'm giving you bad points and I'm giving you the supporting details. Easy, easy. Sure. Just go ahead. So can we tie health with diseases? Yeah, man, you tie health with diseases. You can. But if you want to look at diseases separately, you want to look at health care separately, you could. Um, and Mr. Mr. Sir, go ahead. Um, when you were talking about the diseases, did you say that the boil bush, what did you say, bush rat? Because that's a yeah. term. Yeah, the rat, rat that's tail. Is that like a... It's like a green, it's like a bush with like a flower that's pink. Like a little oh, because I'm thinking of a literal rat. No, man, it's a literal rat. What? Sir. Sir. What? Them of the, 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 the literal bush, that name. So, sir, man is, man is a different thing you're talking about. You know? No, man, is a literal rat tail, lady. They still do it in country. Wow. I know the bush. That, that Sir, just like how them catch scorpion and snake and put in bucket with white rum. But, um, yes. but they don't yeah. drink it. For pain, and them just rub it. They don't drink it. It's like... No, um, they, they boil it. I understand that they, they, they don't drink it, but at the same time... They they do it. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay. it's a literal rat, the rat that lives in the cane fields. Catch him. Ask, ask your parents about it. Apparently, it is a. <laughs> and ask your grandparents. Go to your grandparents and your parents and ask them, and, and most of them might drink it too. It's a. Sorry. But how it's hilarious that it is considered a small Australian nocturnal animal. Last time I checked, Jamaica, very far from Australia. <laughs> no, man, they use the rat and make the part to heal the whooping cough. Now, another issue, ladies, within the three villages were that they had improper diets. Some of them were malnourished and undernourished. Uh, they could not afford things like milk, eggs, uh -huh. and cheese. So their main staple would have been flour and rice. Go ahead, Tommy Austin, and then Barkley. So I was saying that's ironic. So, um, Persons in the free villages, like, them never did, like, plant up, like, a little farm. Say, okay, this is for my little family. So, you know, we have a yam, a banana, everything you could have shared with the community. So, you know, that never happened. But yam and banana, you're eating yam, banana, flour, and rice every day. You know, think so you need other things. Better, sir, what is the same one? You need milk in your diet, and who is the biology student here? Yes, you need protein, <laughs> but sir, them never did rear chicken or anything. No, man, chicken are luxury. Not any anybody could have chicken. 
Then could not understand. Chicken was luxury. Sir. That's why you see in Jamaica, one thing that is very popular is boiled dumpling and butter. Yeah. Sir, I, I never understood why they eat that. Sir, I saw my grandmother eating it and I'm sitting here wondering what is going on. How do you eat boiled dumpling or banana and butter? What is going on? Wait, 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 wait. We've never I had it. Good. Good. Exactly. It uh, actually tastes good. All rice and butter, sir. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, yeah, that tastes good with the butter, but you don't sit down like, and put butter stop. on top of the rice. Sir, anyways, I was wondering, sir, this all makes sense. In a Jamaican, in a Jamaican diet, you know, is that a one thing? Is that they eat rice or eat some type of ground provision? There is no in between, and it all makes sense. It's either it's chicken and rice for dinner, or chicken and dumpling, two dumpling and four and four banana, literally. Mm -hmm. And then also, just to make a point about malnourished and undernourished, why you think that in Jamaican schools, the government in the 1960s implemented Nutribun and milk? Because students were, a lot of the children were malnourished. So that saved most of them in us, sir. And then yeah, go, go ahead, for me, Nelson. Sir, I was just thinking how like their diet back then is still in somewhat some ways like our diet now. Just like what Kiana said in your house every day, mm -hmm. it's either rice or some form of like flour or ground for ground provision. But my mother <laughs> used to tell me that when um <laughs> her and her siblings were younger, they used to have like this bakery that was like um somewhat near to their community. Mm -hmm. And every single day, like as morning light, they would walk to the bakery, and the only thing that they would buy would be like this like loaf of bread, like the white bread, just like a loaf of bread, and it and it wasn't even sliced. And then all of them would just sit down, and some people would come over to them and beg them for some of the bread. And I'm saying to myself, what in the world could cause somebody to sit down and eat one <laughs> loaf of bread in one sitting? Not no butter, not nothing between the bread. But, and but but the point also, Nelson, is that bread was a privilege. Huh? <laughs> yes, bread was a privilege. And no. also, they had a lot of infants. So I must... Miss a lot of me. infants died. <clears throat> Sir, so that's why Jamaican old people can't let go of bread. Them have to buy a bread every time, one or two bread. So I really don't see the fascination with bread, you know. Honestly, I really don't like bread. And Jamaican yeah, old people, sorry. them please. have to eat bread. I'm like, please, bread and egg for breakfast, bread and every, uh-uh, not a fan. I remember, I remember going home. I remember growing up and every Thursday the bread van come and every Thursday grandma said yes. when we went to the normal thing, I said, see the money, you can get the bread. Literally. Bread in a porridge, bread in a everything. I can't the stress. Bread. And also, ladies, very good point. Most of the children diet was porridge. Whether rice porridge, flour porridge, banana porridge, that was most of their diet. Most so, of you know, there was a reason why I never liked porridge, you know. To the reason here, yeah, sorry. That's why you put crackers in there. No, no porridge at all. Don't no. you? No. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like porridge too. Just I the banana porridge. 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 I was eating everything in the world. Yes, sir. Banana porridge alone, but call me a porridge. Mm -mm. Move that from in front of me. Lord. I got the green banana. Green banana porridge is my pride, but me can't deal with the call me because they give me too much call me porridge. I got no sir. I can't bother with that. Go sir, ahead for me, Austin. Sir, I don't have nothing to say. I'm just over here listening. Just hand, hand up. Uh, was... Lawrence. Sir, I was just saying, like, the thing about um them giving the baby part, I don't mm. know if it's just my family, but, like, when you have young babies and, like, when they reach a certain age and, like, they're... Formulas and those stuff like they give them porridge. 
That's it. Eat a with little milk. That's so true. But well, remember, most of these porridges that they used to give to the babies, but they never used to have any milk in it because milk was very expensive. Sir, but then the, the porridge probably helped the baby them to sick up because isn't that what um, grandmothers normally say? Porridge make you sick? Yeah. <laughs> so, what you mean? But they, this, they just did porridge, just, all right. We could have, we could see. Sir, yeah, yes. Go ahead for me. Sir, my mommy told me that my grandma used to have, you know, fried pig tribe? Mm-mm. Sir, no, I, 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 grew, I grew up in a house that didn't... Stop it right me. now. <laughs> you try, uh-uh, sir. No, 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 no. Sir, we can get cut past the chicken foot, but he tried, sir, no, man. I don't, you couldn't That's ask me the why. most right now. <laughs> it was a team fried pig tribe, please. Just like on a goat tribe soup, please. But fry? Yes, you need to fry. Then Better you give me boil, but fry? Uh-uh. What? Ugh, that make it burn. Boil in a soup or it's not fried fry. A boil it's a good taste better. In a soup, it's a good boil, but fry? Uh-uh. Chicken fry. All right, ladies. Uh, very, I understand. But that is what used to happen. And in fact, another issue that you're going to in the privileges is for sanitation. So you have a lot of pit latrines. Yes, in pit toilet, they call it pit latrines. And the pit latrines are very close to the house. And two tools, once they go and use the bathroom, they fly going there and then you're eating. You go and fly pitch on you. You have cholera, diarrhea, you're sick. They didn't have much running water. So that also contributes to cholera and diseases. So the conditions in the privileges, ladies, were not perfect. So we have one, two, three more slides to go. So on Thursday, we're gonna do those three slides. Uh, we're gonna look at the impact of privileges on the society. Then we are going to look at why did some territories have few, few few privileges and then we are finished with privileges in fact ladies i think that we have done well especially with the discussion it shows that you are reading continue to read because one of the things that is taking place here is that we would have just completed two weeks lessons lessons in one so we're moving fast along to finish this syllabus and i just wanted to read so please ladies Continue to read on privileges when we read. When we meet again on Thursday, we can have a good discussion. Okay, sir. Okay, yes, sir. thank you very, very much for the discussion. It was good. It was good hearing all the stories. <laughs> good Friday. All right. So when we meet again on Thursday, you start with the other stories that you have. We want the whole class to tell stories. All right. <laughs> when we finish this syllabus, sir, when we're done. That is true. All right, ladies, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye-bye.